Okay, so if you're on YouTube, which you are because you're watching this, you've probably seen all these videos of ChatGPT and other AI and mashing it into any and all corners of the YouTube world. Well, today, we're gonna do exactly that. We're gonna go find out if AI is gonna replace gear reviewers someday or if it can do a competent job of reviewing a piece of gear. I've got my Stone Def FX Fig Fun pedal here. I'm gonna ask it some questions about it, see if it can produce a review for it, and we'll just have some fun and see what it can do. So let's get right into it. Okay, but first, real quick, I just wanna remind everybody, I am giving away this Schechter seven string guitar with strap locks, and April 12th, 2023, is the last day to enter. So, if you're watching this on the day of release, make sure to subscribe, check out that video, and get entered because I am picking a winner this weekend. All right, let's get right into it. All right, so I've got ChatGPT pulled up here. Let's start with a really basic question, something like, how do guitar pedals work? Guitar pedals are electronic devices used to modify the sound of an electric guitar. They work by manipulating the signal that comes from the guitar before it reaches the amplifier. Here's a brief overview of how guitar pedals work. Input, the guitar pedal receives a signal. Processing, the signal is processed in various ways depending on the type of effect the pedal is designed to create. For example, a distortion pedal might add gain and clipping to create a distorted sound, while a delay pedal might capture and repeat the signal with a time delay. Controls, most pedals have knobs or switches that allow the user to adjust the parameters of the effect. These controls can vary depending on the type of pedal, but might include things like gain, tone, level, delay time, or modulation speed. Output, Signals in. Modified signals and sent to an amplifier, which amplifies and further modifies the sound before it's played to the speakers. Okay, that's correct, but it's pretty obvious it's just taking pretty basic information from the internet and just regurgitating it back at me. All right, what does distortion sound like? Distortion is an effect that's used to add overdrive, fuzz, or saturation to a guitar sound. So this first line is pretty basic. Distortion is an effect used to add overdrive fuzz or saturation. It creates a dirty or gritty tone by intentionally clipping the signal, which can result in a range of different sounds depending on the specific type of distortion effect used. Different types of distortion pedals can create different sounds. For example, a fuzz pedal typically creates a more extreme, fuzzy, and compressed sound with a lot of disdain, while an overdrive pedal creates a more subtle, bluesy, overdriven sound. Okay. Pretty good. Let's get a little more specific. So I'll use my Stone Def FX Fig Fum uh, Big Muff pedal. So let's ask it about that. Can you review the Stone Def FX Fig Fum pedal? As an AI language model, I do not, do not have the ability to physically review products. Video's over. The answer is no. AI cannot review guitar gear. All right. See ya. Bye. Okay, but seriously, let's see what it says. Stone Def Fig Fun Pedal is a versatile distortion pedal that offers a wide range of tonal options. It features a four band EQ. No, it doesn't. With a foot switchable mid range boost. Let me go grab it. All right. So, if you're not familiar, don't have the best lighting here right now. I'm sorry. It's a big muff pedal. It's got a parametric EQ, not a four band EQ. And the second foot switch has a noise gate, not uh, what it say. It's not a mid-range boost. It has a mid-range boost in here. Uh, you've got you can cut or boost the mid-range in a specific frequency you want, but not so good, ChatGPT. Okay. As well, so it features four-band EQ, no foot switchable mid-range boost, no, as well as a gate control that allows for precise noise reduction. Yes. So in its most basic paragraph. 33% correct. One of the unique features of the Fig Fun pedal is its parametric midsection, which allows for precise control over the mid-range frequencies. All right, so this AI isn't quite knowledgeable in music enough to understand that you're not gonna have a parametric mid EQ and a four band EQ. That wouldn't really make sense which allows for precise control over mid-range frequencies. This can be particularly useful for guitarists who want to cut through the mix in a band context or who want to shape their tone in a specific way. That's a pretty good description, yep. Uh, boosting that mids will definitely help you cut through um, a lot of like lower frequencies, bass frequencies. Users generally praise the Fig Fum for its versatility, with many stating it can produce everything from a classic rock sound to a modern high gain tone. Some users also note that the pedal is particularly well suited for playing heavy music styles like metal or punk. Yeah, I mean, big muffs have been in all, uh, pretty much every genre, so... Not bad. 
Continue. However, some users have noted that the fig fun can be difficult to dial in initially, particularly with the parametric midsection, and that it may take some time to find the right settings for a specific setup and playing style. Additionally, some users have reported that the pedal can be noisy at high gain settings, although the built-in noise gate can help mitigate this. I mean, I never found it particularly difficult to dial in. I guess the bandwidth and parametric mid boost could be confusing, but I mean, it's described pretty well in the manual, so I never really had an issue with that. All right, let's ask it what does it sound like. What does the Stone Deaf Fig Fun pedal sound like? Okay, so it starts out basic, but however, some general characteristics of its sound include a powerful high gain tone with a lot of harmonic content and sustain. Okay, goes over the parametric mids again. <laughs> it really thinks there's a four band EQ, huh? With controls for bass, middle, treble, and presence. Is that what the... Yeah, so there's no, there was no presence knob on the original Big Muff. So I'm not sure where it got that, but... The mid-range frequency control also features a foot switchable boost, which can be used to create even more tonal variation. So it's definitely mixing up details from the Fig Fum with something else. I don't know what. Overall, the Fig Fum has been described as a versatile distortion pedal that can produce everything. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Of course, the best way to get a sense of how the Fig Fum sounds is to listen to it yourself. There are many videos online of guitarists demoing the pedal, so you may want to check those out to get a better sense of its sound and capabilities. So, I'm not going to demo the pedal. You guys know what a Big Muff sounds like. Overall, I don't think AI is going to be replacing gear reviewers anytime soon. Let's ask it some more questions. Let's ask it about guitars. Um, what is the best guitar brand? Alright, so, the... Chat GPT seems to be running a little slow today, but I had to refresh and we got it back. So, what is the best guitar brand? As an AI model, I cannot provide a definitive answer to the question of what is the best guitar brand, since it is subjective and depends on individual preferences and needs. However, there are several guitar brands that are widely regarded as producing high quality instrument instruments, including Fender, for their classic electric guitars, such as the Stratocaster and Telecaster, as well as their line of acoustic guitars. Right? Gibson, another iconic guitar brand that produces electric and acoustic guitars, including Les Paul and SG models, Taylor, Martin, and Ibanez. So those are probably the five biggest guitar brands, right? Fair enough. Uh, let's see. Are Legator guitars good? Leg. Legator guitars are a brand of electric guitars that have gained popularity in recent years, particularly among metal and rock guitarists. The brand is known for producing high quality instruments with modern features and design elements. In general, Legator guitars are well regarded for their playability, tone, and aesthetics. They're often praised for their fast playing necks, which can be important for guitarists who play technically demanding styles of music. Legator guitars are also known for their unique features, such as multi-scale fretboards and ergonomic body shapes, which are designed to improve playability and comfort. So they're not wrong, but something tells me that they're grabbing some of that verbiage from some Strandberg copy somewhere. While Legator guitars may not be as well known as some of the more established guitar brands, they've gained a reputation for producing high quality instruments at relatively affordable prices. Okay, that is actually the most specific information on Legator that they gave me, I think. Because they are a really small company and definitely not as well known, but getting better and better every year. Alright, what about Kiesel? Are Kiesel guitars good? Kiesel guitars, formerly known as Carving guitars, nice, are a brand of electric and acoustic guitars handmade in the United States. The company has been around for several decades and is known for producing high quality, customizable instruments that are often favored by professional musicians. That's a much better description of Kiesel. In general, Kiesel old guitars are well regarded for their playability, tone, and craftsmanship. They're often praised for high quality woods, attention to detail, and custom options. Yes, yes, yes which allow musicians to create a guitar tailored to their individual needs and preferences. Kiesel guitars are known for their unique features, such as the headless design of their Vader and Osiris models, which can be particularly useful for guitarists who travel frequently or want a more ergonomic instrument. I do feel like Kiesel really leaned into the headless trend, so interesting that they picked up on that. While Kiesel guitars may not be as well known as some of the more established brands, yeah, okay, so they said the same thing. So this AI's idea of not as well known as the more established guitar brands must be they're not Fender or Gibson, so they're tiny, right? But pretty good, pretty good. Um, all right, I think we can wrap it up there. I don't think AI is gonna replace real gear reviewers anytime soon. I think we're safe for now. Don't think this is gonna put us out of business or anything. Ooh, one more thing, let's see if it got any creative ideas for how to review guitar gear on YouTube. 
Sure, here are some creative ideas for reviewing guitar gear on YouTube. Demonstration and comparison. Add in simply reviewing a single piece of gear, you can create videos that demonstrate and compare different pieces of gear side by side. That's a good idea. Collaborations, great idea. Theme-based reviews. You could create reviews centered around a specific theme or genre. For example, you could review gear that is specifically suited for playing blues or jazz or focus on gear ideal for playing in a certain venue or setting. That's interesting. Q&A sessions. You create Q&A sessions where you yeah. Creative demonstrations, behind the scenes reviews. Pretty interesting. I, I actually like that idea of theme-based reviews. Maybe I'll look into that in the future. All right, that's it. Let's get out of here. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you're watching this on the day of release. One more day to enter the giveaway. Go ahead and enter that and subscribe for more. I'll see you around. Bye.